Welcome everyone, thanks for joining this webinar. I am Luis Corron, Spandle Labs Technical Director. Uh, I'm going to talk about WannaCry, trying to solve all questions and doubts you may have, and making a recap of what has happened so far and what options there are to be prepared for the next wave of attacks. Uh, let's start from the beginning, which is always a good thing, and it all started on Friday the 12th, first time in the morning we detected the first case. Uh, it took place in, in Madrid, in Spain, at 8.05 a.m. Four hours later, uh, reports of a new threat in Spain affecting big corporations start showing up in the media, um, and it was what we all call afterwards wanna cry. So, uh, what was what is this wanna cry? Uh, it is a network worm uh, that takes advantage of a vulnerability in Windows to spread to other computers through the network. As soon as it finds a machine with a vulnerable version of SMB running, it will attack it using the Eternal Blue Split through the port 445. As by you, by now you already know, probably, the Eternal Blue Split was released a month ago, and it belongs to a cyber weapon arsenal developed by the NSA. We've been analyzing the code present in WannaCry, and it's not that it is similar to the one in the NSA, but it is exactly the same, a copy of the original, which at the end of the day makes sense. Why change in something that already works? Uh, can we blame the NSA? Well, uh, I would say there is a fair amount of blame, to be sure, and yes, the NSA is to be blamed. Also, it is not an excuse for not having patched the computers. I mean, we have to remember that the patch had been available for two months, or for having SMB exposed to the internet, which is something that still puzzles most of us. Um, what Eternal Blue does is uh, to inject a malicious DLL into the system process LSAS.exe, uh, and it will be this LSAS uh, who will take care of executing the DLL, which is called Launcher DLL, that contains all the malicious code, including the ransomware that will run on the computer. From there, it will continue spreading in both the local network and the rest of the internet. This is important because uh, people at the beginning thought that it was only spreading through a local network. No, it was through the local network and through all the internet. Um, so regarding when I cry, um, I'm not going to describe each and every small detail of it here. Uh, in the following URL, you will find different resources and information. Uh, such as uh, detailing technical analysis of WannaCry, probably one of the most complete you may find right now. Uh, we have also published there a couple of videos, so you can actually see how WannaCry works and how it infects other computers. Um, I think th those are really clarifying. Uh, what I want to do now is to answer some of the most frequent questions people is asking these days about, about WannaCry. Like, did it come via email? Uh, most media reported that the initial attack uh, was sent via spam messages through email. Uh, here you have uh, one example, uh, Financial Times, where they even uh, give details such as it came in a zip file. Uh, well, as far as I can tell you, this is not true. I mean, all attacks have been, all of the attacks we have seen have been through the Eternal Blue exploit since the very first day. Um, the two days later, after WannaCry showed up, I was checking my email. I had a few messages from different colleagues in the industry asking me about this topic. Uh, well, the thing is that uh, as the first news came from Spain, and uh, our headquarters are here in Spain, so it makes sense that all the competitors were asking us to see if we had some more intel or anything that they hadn't seen. Because the same as has, they hadn't seen a single email. I confirmed that there were no emails, and, uh, and it, actually on Monday morning I, I decided to tweet this uh, to make it clear. Uh, nowadays it is, well, media is not, not saying any more that uh, uh, talking about this e email vector. Uh, is it as massive as the media has reported? Well, it, it always depends on the point of view. It has a massive attack. I mean, it has been a massive attack. There is no doubt about it. Uh, but at the same time, if we remember past threats such as I don't know SQL Slammer or Blaster, this has not been that massive. Uh, 
nowadays most of users uh, they are behind a router and then also they have uh, Windows updates activated by default which means they were already protected like for two months uh, however uh, the damage caused by WannaCry by the pay, the payload of WannaCry the ransomware in this in this attack is, is way bigger than any of the other massive threats we have seen until now as the ransomware will encrypt all valuable information in the computer and in the network servers. So there are still a number of computers still infected, uh, and I wouldn't risk to connect uh, an unpatched computer to the internet because it's uh, it would be a matter of time to to get it infected. Uh, you probably have seen some figures. Uh, uh, the last time I checked, they were saying that there were around 300,000 victims. I would say that that number is way higher. I mean, there are a number of computers within corporate networks that have been infected, although they have no connection to the outside. So we are probably talking about millions of computers infected. Because uh, this 300,000 figure, uh, the WannaCry connects to a website, so they were counting the number of IP addresses connecting to that uh, to, to that specific IP address. Uh, but the thing is that uh, all the computers that have no connection to the outside cannot connect to that website, which so they cannot be counted in, the, in that way. That's why uh, I think we are talking about millions. One of the characteristics of WannaCry is that it, it tries to connect to this specific URL I was talking about, uh, and if in case it exists, it doesn't do anything. It won't spread anymore, and it won't execute the ransomware p payload. Uh, during the first weekend, a security researcher registered that domain. Um, however, that didn't stop WannaCry. Why didn't? I mean, this kill switch domain was registered, but still WannaCry kept spreading. Well, uh, many companies connect to the internet through a proxy. Uh, a number of them even disconnected themselves from the internet while trying to figure out how to solve the situation with the infection. And as long as there was no internet connection, uh, when a crack keeps going smoothly, uh, and not only that, there are variations that have a different domain. So this kill switch was only covering a portion of the infections anyway. And talking about variants, uh, how many variants of WannaCry are there? Well, it, it all depends on how you define a variant. Since the beginning, we have seen several different variations. However, all of them serve the same functionality. The last time I checked, we were over 700. The changes go from small changes to the file to try to avoid signature detections, or just to change the kill switch domain. Can regular antivirus clean the infection? Well. The short answer is yes. Uh, the long one is it depends. I mean, why? Well, unless your security solution is able to protect the computer from the eternal exploit, it will be getting the malware again and again. And as soon as it doesn't detect a new variant or a completely new one, your computer will be compromised. Um, one of the important questions, uh, who are the victims? Well, to be fair, I have almost no idea about this topic. According to the media, big companies around the world have been affected. WannaCry uh, has mainly affected medium and big enterprises. Uh, for those, we have our endpoint detection and response solution, which is called Adaptive Defense. Uh, it is installed in over a million computers. Uh, this is what we say. In our website about RP Defense, detect some blocks malware that any other protection system misses. And here it comes my favorite part, numbers don't lie. Not a single device in lock mode has been infected. So, what has really happened with WannaCry and RP Defense? Well, uh, when RP Defense is configured in lock mode, which is around 50% of them, uh, half a million computers, no unknown process is allowed to run. So what happened when those computers were attacked? Nothing. Even though they were not patched and were therefore vulnerable, they were fully protected. In fact, uh, when I was talking at the big, uh, about the videos we have uploaded to our website, one of the videos is uh, a computer with no no patch on it, no updated, so vulnerable to WannaCry and the eternal blue exploit. 
It has adaptive defense in lock mode, and it is outdated, like for one day before the the WannaCry is sold up, and it has no connection to the internet or to the cloud. And then we face it to WannaCry from another computer in the same local network. And you will see how it blocks it, even though it has never seen a, a, this thread before. You can say, yeah, well, Luis, that sounds really nice, uh, but when you install Adaptive Defense, the default mode is called Hardening. So what happened with those? I mean, uh, the thing is that this vulnerability uh, was not new to us. We had been studying it, and we even even had a small set of rules that avoid the the execution of malware using the eternal blue exploit. And as we had these rules already done and tested, uh, we published them the same Friday that the threat showed up. So that's why most of our customers did not notice anything, as they have been protected all the time. Uh, on top of that, thanks to the knowledge we gain with Adaptive Defense, we could use our cloud to protect all the rest of our customers. So we have barely had any, any kind of incident. So, I'm going to start now going back to 2001. Uh, this is really early, but this is related to when I cry. So, October 2001, Microsoft launches Windows XP. Nobody knew that, but it had included this SMB bug. All the other operating systems launched after that had it included too. At some point in time, uh, we don't know when, the NSA finds out the vulnerability and creates Eternal Blue to land their own attacks. They keep using it. Uh, then, at some point, in, it is believed that it is in, the, in 2013, the group known as Shadow Brokers steals Eternal Blue. Uh, later, uh, the NSA will realize of this, and they will let Microsoft know so they can make a fix, and, and they. That's what they did and published this update two months ago in March 14th. Shadow uh, brokers tried to sell the tool, but they were asking for a ridiculous uh, high amount of money. So nobody bought it. Um, and they decided to publish it. That was in April 14th. Uh, one month later, when I cry, spread worldwide. And the question here is, there were really no other attacks during that month. I mean, there was a, a period of one month since Eternal Blue was made public and when a crisis saw that. Adaptive defense monitors in real-time all processes that are running in each computer. So we decided to take a look at all times in the last month where we had blocked some malicious behavior and the system process LSAS had been involved somehow. And we found something. The first case was on April, on April 24th, and unlike the WannaCry attack, which directly injected malware into the process, uh, here they use it in a completely different way. Here you can see how they are running the CMD, so the XC, through the L LSAS process. So then they are able to, for example, create a new user, download components of the tools, they will be using a kiloloader version of tools they had previously installed, uh, go into auto run to gain persistence, create a scheduled task. Most of the actions are carried out with Windows Sound utilities or non-malicious tools, making it impossible the detection for traditional antiviruses. One of the things they did was to close port 445 to prepare, to prevent other actors from taking advantage of the MS-17010 uh, vulnerability. Funny enough, this means they were protecting those computers and being infected by WannaCry. Uh, and one important note here, those of you who have not been infected, even though you have not patched your systems, take a second look as you could have been previously attacked by these guys. One of the goals of the attack was to install the cryptocurrency mining so software uh, the, the currency that was being mined was called Monero. It's similar to Bitcoin. Uh, here in the screen, you can see how it is installed as a service and launches the mining program. 
Uh, one of the characteristics I like the most about uh, adaptive defense is the ability to generate forensic information in real time. It's really so useful for anyone that is running it. I mean, even if at some point in the future there is a security breach, uh, it, it allows you to find out the answer to all questions we do ourselves when a breach happens. What has happened? When did it happen? Where did it come from? What, what have the attackers done since I've, uh, before I found them? Um, so the, the good news is that our customers were already protected, and we could spend our time doing what we like the most, which is reverse engineering WannaCry. Uh, that allowed us to learn everything about it. We even created a free vaccine to help the unfortunate companies that are not our customers. Uh, in short, this begin works in the following way. It makes the computer immune to WannaCry, even if the patch is not installed yet. Uh, it makes it because uh, WannaCry checks for a uh, specific mutex in, in memory. So this vaccine basically creates those mutexes. And, and then if WannaCry shows up, it will think it is already running on the computer and it will, won't do anything. As a track bonus, we scan all processes in memory and if there is any malicious one, we'll remove it for you. This is already in, in, in our website. In, you, can, you will find it from the link I have put in the presentation earlier. Well, um, so conclusion, remember that um, adapt, updating our systems is critical. And I'm not talking about this specific vulnerability, but all of them. It is time to have processes in place that allow us to to have all critical updates deployed in our network as soon as possible. Those of you that still have all operating system versions, such as Windows XP or Vista, and for some reason you cannot upgrade them, well, uh, those computers have to be specifically fortified, for example, using log mode if you have adaptive defense, and as isolated as possible. Antivirus solutions have their limits, and in this world we're living, they are not enough. New solutions that provide full endpoint detection and response, such as adaptive defense, are the only ones that can effectively fight against all kinds of attacks, including malwareless attacks, those that do not use malware to perform the malicious actions, hacking attacks, etc. This is all. Thank you very much for attending this webinar that will be published in the video.